Welcome to Riverside Community Players Inside the Arena Cast Conversations to the first cast conversation of our 100th season. I, mean, I feel like there should be fanfare or I something. I know, right? Like, that, like there should be an explosion behind us I, and yeah, like confetti. Yeah, and, and just, you know, this this band playing. It's, it truly is amazing that we've reached 100 years. I'm, I'm here with uh, Ron Miltz, who Hi. is not unknown to you, who's directing our first show. Um, on Golden Pond, but we'll, we'll get to that in just a minute. But Ron, uh, actually, I, I wanted to tell you initially how we were going to start this interview was having you coming in off the catwalk, uh, suspended down with a torch and a banner, uh, you know, saying welcome to the 100th season. I love it. We, our insurance said you know, <laughs> you know, we, couldn't, we couldn't do that. So. Do you have pulleys that can handle me is the real question. <laughs> so, Actually, uh, so Ron is, Ron is, dra <laughs> Ron is directing our, our, our opening show of our 100th season. And uh, Ron's, Ron's no stranger here. So uh, recently, uh, let me see if I can go backwards in order. Oh. The, let's see, we did uh, Night of the Living Dead. That is correct. Before that was... Oz. Oz, okay. And gentlemen and... Governors and gentlemen and... Uh, no, we did, we did uh, uh, How to Write, a Renaissance Tragedy, which was not main stage. Okay. But that was the one that Mike and I had written. Okay. Uh, we did Tempest out on the courtyard. Yeah, uh, okay. Uh, during COVID times. Right, yes. And then the last show pre-COVID was One Man, Two Governors. Um, and then before that, it was um, the Christmas show. We did a Christmas Carol. And right. then I did Dinner Party dinner party and we did fuddy mirrors here as well as part of the uh the spotlight series so ron you're no stranger to riverside community no, Bears, no. and i i'm i'm thrilled that you're he heading our first show of our 100 season which is on golden pond yes and that's something that you guys out there chose um was as you re recall we chose our 100 season by doing the ballots that was one of the very first shows that uh reached the the vote quota and and here we are starting with it um, and it was your first choice as well. Uh, yeah, I, when I looked at the season this year, um, I mean, there was so much good stuff. Uh, I, of course, Cuckoo's Nest is one of my all-time favorites. Um, uh, sadly, my schedule didn't fit for that. And then my absolute first choice of what, like, I, the rest of them was this show. Uh, this show is... I, I am a weird a child growing up. We watched a lot of cinema when I was young. Yeah. Uh, and weirdly, this movie and Cocoon were oh. like two of my all-time favorites as a kid, along yeah. with Star Wars and Indiana Jones. Uh, so old soul from the time I was young. Uh, um, but, you know, uh, always loved Wilford Brimley and always loved, uh, um, why can't I think of her name? Uh, Jessica Tandy. <laughs> yes, yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Cocoon. And yeah. then the, uh, but the, with this show, um, I didn't understand this show kind of as a kid i just enjoyed uh the relationship between the grandfather and the uh, the grandson in the oh, film sure. version yeah um and a lot of that was because uh i didn't have i had all my grandfathers had really passed by the time i was uh old old enough to like have a grandfather relationship like that so in my mind it was the thing that i like imagined like well would this is this is what i imagine a relationship would be like with a grandparent like i had all my grandmothers were alive but none of my grandfathers had survived so well that's the Thing with on Golden Pond, um, it, it, you've got an icon classic mm -hmm. of late 20th century, not only theater but cinema. Oh yeah. Um, I think for me personally, this was probably the second show I ever saw live on stage at oh, my wow. community theater. So I have, I have very vivid memories of this as a child also, and being absolutely mesmerized by the stage show. And then of course went on to see the to see the film. My question to you, though, as a director, being, uh, you know, having had such a broad range of, uh, on your resume sure. behind you, with this classic show, how did it age? Oh, that's a tough one. Um, both amazingly and poorly, all equally. Uh, yeah. Do you it, want to speak to that? How it, that? Uh... It's such a reflection of the period that it takes place, I think, ultimately, um, that you 
you run into people that if you were of a certain age, like, or even now, you know these people. They are your your grandparents. They are, you know, your your aunts and uncles that you only see at the cookout or at the family reunion. Um, and they, and especially with Norman, like, he he's a very intelligent man that he's he just sort of is losing his filter as he's slowly slipping into dementia mm. and his ability to regulate himself is going away and I find that um, having just come from a family reunion in Ohio uh, that all of my older relatives <laughs> suffer from this you know <laughs> um, and it's it's always a, it's one of those things where you just kind of like bite your tongue and you're like okay they're of their time so like how do you approach that and I think for us one of the things is working on that idea of going hey we as a we as a show, we're not going to shy away from this. Uh, we're not going to shy away from the, the possibly controversial things that he says because it's important. It's important to uh, they. They are uh, important to the character. Uh, they're Let's important see. to. He's not Archie Bunker. He's not a person that's always lived in this world. He is a person that is falling into this as he's getting uh, falling into senility. You know, and it's yeah. it's a tough. Uh, moment but you have to work on your responses from your other actors um, and I think you're gonna get you know the, you're gonna make the audience uncomfortable um, in, in ways that they don't expect you know so, really yeah, yeah I mean I think that's I think that's part of what theater does so, absolutely I mean, it, it takes us into our comfort level and it definitely takes us out of our comfort level I think the character of Norman is is probably one of the most uh, again iconic uh, characters for an actor in the late I mean, obviously Henry Fonda d d did it yeah. in the in the film. Yeah. Um, that one of his. One, I think he won an Oscar for it. I, I believe I so. Mean, I feel but like I'm he did. Not, he should have. I mean, if he didn't, <laughs> I'd be shocked. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but I will say the the thing I find interesting is how much different this version is than the film version. So the yeah. film version obviously came after, uh, and they flesh more stuff out in the film version. The kid has a much larger part, I think, in the film version than he does in our version. I see. Um, and uh, but I think that w the stuff that they took out. Um, I think it speaks more to the relationship between uh, Norman and Ethel. Um, and you, we, we spend more time with the two of them than I think we do in the movie. Whereas in the movie, the film version, you spend more time with Jane Fonda, you know, and because she was Jane she Fonda. Was Jane Fonda yeah, so so the height, gonna, of, height of her yeah. career at that moment. So, so, and it's the whole father daughter, like in a film thing. Yeah. Um, but it's like in this version, it's like while we do spend a lot of time with Chelsea, the daughter, um, it, it's. It, it is the primary relationship is between the couple and that's ultimately like we are a single set show which is how the show is written um, it is designed to be in one location the whole time um, and we and we're in it right now you know so it's yes welcome so where are we actually where uh, so we're in their lake house up okay. in Maine uh, mm -hmm. if you walk right out the front door you'll fall into the water in I our see. world yeah um, the front door is over here to our right and the audience will be sitting here um, uh, we we weirdly are having a uh, flashbacks to Night Living Dead as some of the set pieces have <laughs> refound their way into our <laughs> the world of Norman and, and Ethel uh, yeah. <laughs> um, like that piece definitely had zombie blood all over it nine months ago so yeah um, but you know it's one of those things where when you're going for a rustic look and a rustic feel we we have some very nice pieces here in the theater and we're able to you know they show up from time to time as every good company has what has been the most surprising thing about stepping back into this world of of, of the Thayers oh. in this play, in this this work of? Um, I think from day one, uh, myself as the director and from the, with the cast, um, I, I sat them down and I said, I, I have some preconceived notions on what I believe this show is about and what are these moments about. But I also left it open to interpretation by the actors. And so we spend a lot uh, of time uh, like we will stop and we will have a conversation about things mm -hmm. and just go well what do you think because it's not implicitly stated in the script a lot of times and you need this information we need to make choices about uh, when was the last time we all saw each other how do we feel about this person what you know it's like the little things yeah. you would normally do in table work um, this script doesn't spoon feed the audience that information it is uh, there's a lot left to interpretation and depending on how you interpret things is how it's going to change the presentation of this show um, and I and for one of us one of the big things was like really dissecting and going what were the parts of Norman before and what are the parts now so uh, what are the surprising moments for us you know because he's not just this guy who like has 
spouts of anger. He's not constant, always a jerk. He's got to have sweet moments, and there had to have been a time where he Balance. wasn't. Yeah. yeah. Where? W what was he like before we meet him in this moment? Right. And I think a lot of that is like us discovering and having conversations as an ensemble and trying to work our way through what all these character relationships are like. Well, I think that's any great script, mm -hmm. and that must be that must speak to why it survived this long and why our our patrons have asked to see this show again. Yeah. So this is not the first time we produced this show. Um, so in our history, and I'm uh, Lynn Ennis, our, our, our producer is over there. Hi, Lynn. <laughs> and I may ask for help on this. So we've done this twice here in Riverside Community Players, once in 1981. 83. 83. 83. Okay, mm -hmm. see, I'm, I'm glad, and you know. <laughs> uh, directed by Mike Charles, starring Franklin Bud Chambers, Franklin Bud Chambers and and Gretchen Adams, and Anne DeWolf was also in the cast as well. So that's 1983, and then jump again to 19... 2008. 2008, and we have Phil Holmer directing uh, Don Hudson and Deb McFadder. Uh, Mike Trulock was in this cast, and Kelly Kelly uh, mm -hmm. was in this cast, so I mean... I mean, yeah. You've got some. I know a lot of those names. You got some. <laughs> you got some shoes to fill there, and, and your cast does as well. I was. Uh, uh, we were talking about it beforehand that because uh, Michael Charles, the first show I ever did in this space was a Christmas Carol, right. as a lot of people have. Uh, I had a spot and I, uh, in my schedule, and so I came in to do a Christmas show, and I believe 2006, and Michael Charles was Ebenezer Scrooge in that show, yeah. Yeah. as he was yeah, everywhere I mean, really was. in the yeah, city of Riverside do do. for yeah <laughs> for like 20 <laughs> years, um, but it. Was uh, uh, he? He was such a like such a kind gentleman, and it was like the, the opportunity as a, a young actor who was out in the world uh, to get to meet somebody that was so experienced and get to work with them. And then it's so neat now, uh, sitting here on this show, getting the opportunity to do it. Um, this show is like such a full circle experience for me in so many ways. Uh, Mel uh, Chadwick, who is our Norman, um, the second show I ever did, I did with Mel and I did with Lynn. Um, and it was, I was just a wee pup uh, with no gray hair and uh, probably 50 pounds lighter <laughs> and uh, <laughs> yeah <laughs> so uh, but it's like it's such a, a unique experience coming full circle into this idea um, of this show and especially with Mel like uh, Mel is a, as you guys will see later is a, a handsome ageless wonder who who tells me he's 80 and I'm all get out of here <laughs> you're not and he's like yeah and then uh, in my mind I'm like well I guess I'm almost 50 so that would make sense well you so, know the, yeah. the thing about Mel I've always said is that when I grow up I want to be Mel right you I know? mean yeah I, I really uh, I, he's a true gentleman of the theater I one day hope to be as handsome <laughs> as Mel so <laughs> yeah <laughs> right. so okay we know Mel Chadwick's in the cast tell me about the rest of your cast we're gonna get to meet a couple of them in a moment but uh, let, let us know who else is in your in your show uh, well our our uh, our Ethel uh, to our Norman uh, is Sandra Ford, um, and Sandra uh, comes to us via North High School, I believe. Uh, um, I don't did not know Sandra before the audition process. Uh, she came into the room, um, and to me, she absolutely claimed the part from the moment she auditioned. Um, it was a fantastic audition, everything you could want, um, and she gives gives us great work on the stage every single night like every night she comes in and she's like well i'm starting to cry and i'm like that's great go with it like let's do it um don't be a f like let's not be it like the audience will be there with you you know um and the two between her and mel they've they've developed such a a, a great relationship between the two of them at this point that yeah. there is a believability to their marriage uh a believability that they've been together for 30 years it sounds, it sounds like they had that elusive thing we call chemistry oh right? i, that, I that, mean that, i've that, never that had spark. that with anybody so i don't know you know uh but <laughs> 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 Love you, Phil. All right. Yeah, that's all right. <laughs> so, so yeah, and then um, go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was going to say. So you've got you've got a good supporting cast to round us out. Then, with your, yeah. Your so uh, uh, oh my lord, uh, Veronique, uh, and I believe her last name is pronounced. Potre. Yes, Veronique. Français. Yes, uh, she's she is playing their daughter uh, Chelsea. Um, and she uh, also an incredibly accomplished actor. Yes, fantastic. Yeah, yeah. My first opportunity. I've known Veronique uh, as an acquaintance for many years, uh, but it's my first opportunity to get to work with her as a director. Um, she she brings it every night to yeah, the she, stage. She does, uh, and, that's, and that's a true statement about her. The uh, the relationship between the three of them. Um, she's completely believable as Mel's daughter. 
she's fiery. Uh, she shoots back at him. The two of the, like we were working on a scene with the two of them last night um, and you could just feel the energy. Um, That's exciting. Yeah, and it, it had that moment where it like, you don't get it very often, but as a director, it like took my breath away in yeah. the moment. Cause I was like, damn, this is gonna be good. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah you know. Yeah. Uh, and then it's like, uh, her and her and Sandra have such a, a great mother-daughter uh, relationship and it's so fun to watch them um, uh, zigzag between loving in one moment and uh, confrontational in the next. And the two of them have created uh, just such a believable loving mother-daughter relationship uh, that it's like I, I almost I long for more scenes in this show. It's kind of like the three of them isn't it? It's, mm -hmm. it's really a relationship about the three together 100%. in a lot of ways. Yeah, yeah. You know, isn't it? And then we got uh, uh, I am so sorry like everybody's names escaping my head right now. I, I know I was gonna say Isaac. Do you know Isaac's last name? Isaac. Or Nalus? Nalus. Thank you. Uh, so we have a young man uh, that's playing our Billy Ray Jr., Isaac Ornalis, and it is his first show he's ever done. Um, so this young man used to play uh, sports, his mom said, and then he found the audition listening and said, hey mom, I wanna go audition for on Golden Pond. So maybe he's like me and just has like a love of old cinema, who knows? Yeah. Um, but it's his first show he's ever done uh, and he is, uh, even at auditions, I just found him to be very endearing. Um, and uh, he and Mel have fantastic chemistry. Like, I completely believe that Mel is both entertained and annoyed by him at all times. Um, so, 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 but it's, uh, uh, he, it, him doing his first show is such an interesting energy with all of these veterans that have like hours and hours upon the board, uh, the boards, that it, it creates nice moments. It happens so. sometimes, you know, sometimes this freshness comes in. This, mm -hmm. this you know, this, this no, no necessarily, you don't have to have the training. Mm -hmm. You just, you just have that it that's something that uh, makes you an actor yeah and then you, know, you can't learn that really no no you no just, you just you have it or you know well or you train for 50 years and, you know, <laughs> and then maybe you have it I don't know no, no, I wouldn't know uh, once again no uh, no chemistry um, so uh, but the idea uh, are of having like a father for him mm -hmm. that like you've got this kid that's like this spitfire so you got to find like the ultimate nice guy and uh, David Crane to me is like one of the nicest people I've ever met in my life and he comes across so uh, loving on stage as Bill Ray and patient he's like everything that I am not as a father with my own child um, but he is uh, uh, the two of them uh, have such a believable relationship and then it creates this nice uh, uh, dichotomy between him and Norman um, and the two of them when they go to war it's like David's trying to maintain that niceness but at the same time it, it's like he just can't always you know you know bite the bullet and yeah he punches back against Norman but it's like the, the cast as a uh, as as a group uh, have come together very nicely. And then we have uh, James Miro, uh, who's playing Charlie, who is uh, the daughter's uh, ex-boyfriend from when they were young. Um, and uh, Charlie's the mailman, and yeah. he's, you know, he's that mainer. Um, but James is uh, completely lovable. Um, he is everything you want, like, a, a, you know, like the lovable sad sack guy to be, um, who comes in and is still, like, holding the candle for this girl that he dated when he was, like, you know, 19. I so, see. yeah, yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, we're going to meet a couple of those cast members just in just a few moments. We're going to meet Sandra Ford and Mel Chadwick. Um, so uh, stay tuned with us in just a moment. This is uh, Riverside Community Players Cast Conversations Inside the Arena. Uh, thank you for joining us for our first interview of our 100th season. Uh, we're going to take a few moments. We're going to put some really important information up on your screen, and we'll be right back. Welcome back to Cast Conversations Inside the Arena. I'm Philip Gabriel, and I am joined by some of the most talented folks in the Valley or anywhere. Thank you very much for joining me. So, uh, Sandra Fort, Mel Chadwick, and of course, uh, Ron Meltz is back. Uh, and as uh, Mel and Sandra are playing the iconic roles of Norman and Ethel Thayer. That's true. In our first show of our 100th season. Um, Sandra, welcome. A have you... It's been a minute since you've worked here. Um, it's been a year. I did to um, witness for the prosecution. It's the last Correct. one I did here. Okay. And probably before that, it was a little time because I think maybe the murder room or private lives, one of those uh, I did. So it was a little bit before I 
It, it had been a while. Yeah. You're no stranger to inland theater. Right. You yeah. have you have been working in the valley for a while. Tell us about uh, tell us about some of the things you've done. Okay, so on this stage, I've done Laura, I've done The Constant Wife, I did MASH way back in the day. Um, I do a lot out at Chino. I did their Three on the Edge um, uh, a little over a year ago. Um, and yeah, you know. And you came out for On Golden Pond. And I came out for On Golden Pond. And as we heard Ron say, you nailed it. Well, here's the thing. I've never seen the movie. And I'm choosing not to see the movie because I don't want to see somebody else's interpretation. Okay. Um, so I ordered the, the play before I auditioned okay. and fell in love with it. And I thought, yes, I'm going to audition for that. So th that was actually my next question. Here you have one of the most iconic roles of the late 20th century from one of the biggest actors in Hollywood and on stage. you got Catherine Hepburn doing this role. How do you look at something like that, and then approach it. Well, you actually just answered that. Well, I think mostly, um, I, I, I obviously saw the advertisements when the movie was out, so yeah. I know I've seen little clips of it, but I'm not gonna be Catherine Hepburn. I'm not yeah. going to be. Um, and the play is written in such a way that I don't see her as Catherine Hepburn. I don't see the interpretation to be the same. Um, and I'm hoping that the, the people who come out to join us uh, enjoy a, a, another way of looking at our interpretation so that they're not coming in saying I want to see that iconic role I hope they embrace I want to see what you know what these people bring to these roles who is Ethel there Ethel is a devoted wife although I believe we're a little uh, even though this is in the 1970s um, I think we're a little edgy um, we've been together for 48 summers um, we're madly in love. We have our moments. And we're slipping, <laughs> and he's slipping away. Yeah. And he's slipping away. And she's desperately trying to hold on to anything that's familiar. She wants to hold on to the memory of what her husband was, not what he's becoming. She wants to hold on to the false memory of what she thought her daughter was. She wants to hold on to the memory of what Golden Pond was in her life. And so she's at that, that point in her life. She's 69 and she's not so much regretting what's happened in the past, but visiting the past and wanting to live there for a little while before she has to go. So you've told us who Ethel is. What was it about Ethel that made Sandra say, and you've never seen the movie, but, or, or any of that, said, I want that role. I want to do that. That's that's something I want to tackle. What what was I was think, that? Um, even though she's a little older than me, I see what she's seeing. I see where she's going, and I think yeah. at this stage, and you know, when you get in your 50s and your 60s, you start to look back, and you're very nostalgic, and for some reason, the past is so much more beautiful than it was when it was the present. <laughs> and Boy, that's, that's <laughs> true, isn't it? Yeah. And um, I, I, I appreciated her discovery of that journey and her love and discovery of her husband. And it really seemed like a challenge that I wanted to tackle. Mel Chadwick. Yes. Well, I don't know if you heard us earlier, but we were talking about you. <laughs> I, um, I was uh, dis distracted by other stuff. By so other I didn't stuff. Yeah, sorry. It's always great to have you on, Thank you. on stage. Thank you, And to be uh, I'm, uh, I've, I personally, I've known Mel for, gosh, 15 years. I've yeah. worked with Mel, yeah. Yeah. You're, you're one of the nicest guys ever that you could work with. Well, thank you. Um, I have my moments, but... Um, I, 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 yeah, but here's the thing. You're also playing an iconic character of, of yes, Norman. Yes. And there are parts of Norman that, and Ron and I talked about a little earlier, there are parts of Norman that are emerging that maybe aren't as nice as, as, as Mel Chadwick. Right. The really nice guy, actor. Well, yes. How, how does... Well, interesting. Now, how do you do that? How interestingly do you, how enough, do you that? I have people. I've had people, and I still have people in my life who are like that. Who are really? who are turning into like Archie Bunker types, or yeah. or irascible kind of. They were just nice and gentle people at one time in their lives, and as they've gotten older, they've turned into these uh, kind of racist, bigoted people that you just whoa, you can't believe what they're saying. What they're saying. So, and that's that's kind of what I'm I'm dealing with here with this character 
And I, I didn't want to play it at first because Henry Fonda's image of of him was in my mind sure. so strongly sure. that I thought, oh, I, I couldn't get it out of my head. But thanks to Mr. Miltz over here, uh, he has led me in a direction that's uh, completely uh, in a way that I wouldn't have gone uh, on my own. So yeah, thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank and uh, so far anyway, <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> so uh, You've got how many weeks of rehearsal? Three weeks yeah. to go. you got yeah, three weeks <laughs> yeah. to go. So yeah, so, yeah it's, uh, it's, uh, it's really very enlightening for me to see, to see um, Norman this way. It, and, and it's not a huge difference, it's not a, it's not a huge departure, but it's, it's, uh, it's just very interesting to go in, in that direction, in that, that way, it's just. To jump in on that real quick, I think one of the things like that we've all discovered, especially with our version of Norman, I've always thought like the Henry Fonda version is, he's just crotchety like the whole time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he doesn't, and, and not to, say I just it's the editing like he's missing some of the softer moments for me yeah. uh, and I think like working with Mel and working with Sandra we've been able to discover those softer moments that almost like light shining through a crack like the old Norman is still there the softer version of him exists somewhere in there and every so often he lets his guard down before he gets angry that he can't remember. He gets angry that he's forgetting things. He gets ang he's scared. He's a man that's yeah. scared to be in his own home. And I yeah. think like finding those moments for Mel um, uh, has made the character more relatable. I think. Yeah. And and it's has allowed yeah, yeah and allowed their relationship to burgeon in a way that yeah. I don't think we would have otherwise if we just had him being angry all the time. Yeah, so. and I love Sandra's way of approaching it. Is is uh, not. Um, we're not butting heads. She gives, she gives in to me, and, but she does it in such a nice, pleasant way. <laughs> so nice, and she's a kind of flowery and sweet, and hugs me and things, even with the terrible things I'm saying. And so uh, it's just, uh, it's just kind of a pleasure to, to have that dichotomy. Have you guys worked together before? This Never. No. no. Really. No. And we've been in, you know, we've been in theater around here for yeah, quite a while. You guys are very well known together. here in, in yeah. theater. For and some and reason, we've yeah. never worked together. I don't know why. Yeah. Uh, ships that have, well, now is now's the opportunity. Yeah. 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 Well, Mel, you've recently taken um, sort of a year off to do uh, other things. Um, yes. Your art. I've, I've been painting and drawing for a year, and I'm loving it. Good. Or have been loving it. I'm over. It's over now. But yeah. It's a, well, we've missed you on stage. Well, thank you. So, thank so, you. so welcome back. Um, and, and Sandra, what have you been, what's what's next for you? What are you? So uh, my challenge the past, well, uh, number of years is I don't audition as much as I used to because I coach mock trial. Do you really? And mock trial is, it's theater. It is theater. And we to, uh, we'll, we'll talk yes. about it. <laughs> I coach mock trial at uh, Which, John W. North High School. At North. And okay. um, it's a joy, but it's very time consuming. Yes, it is. It, it, it is all. I know my daughter had been in mock trial, so it is okay. like, it takes your whole life. Yes. <laughs> so <laughs> I've tried to like work shows in yeah. when I can, but it does it does consume you. And yeah. so we're about to start our new season. Yes. We'll get our case in a couple of weeks. Yeah. And so yeah. excited about that. That is exciting. So, it's, it's, I guess it's a, bit, it's a bit like directing, isn't it? Very much so. so. Yeah, it's kind of like, you know, uh, doing improv. Like, you have material, but you're yeah. doing improv. I mean, yeah. you're not studying lines, but you're studying your background. But you've got to know the law, and you've got to know the you cases. Know the you've got to know, cases, yeah, you've yeah. got, yeah, that's a really, really important thing. So, have you directed, uh, like, theater other than, you know, I'm, I'm like, call mock trial theater, I, it is, but. No, I have not. Uh, in fact, I've, I've spoken to Michelle Grotness. You guys should know Michelle. Um, and I cons I considered it, um, but no, I've never directed. And Mel, you've directed, I know. I have. I and you just completed just, something over in Redlands. Yeah, I did something uh, with uh, Lynn Ennis of uh, Fireflies. Yeah. And Ron, hmm? get remembers Ron's last Witty. 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 Yeah, that's right. Sorry, Ron. Uh, Ron Witty. Um, uh, uh, in a little thing called Fireflies. Yeah, it's a great show. And it was, it was it well received. It was a it very was. nice experience. Yeah. It was a, it was a really good show. I mean, it was also a show about relationships, which is... Absolutely. Slice kind of, of life kind of thing. Kind of what, uh, yeah. kind of what this is. Yeah. I will say, I was, telling, um, I was telling Mel just a couple of days ago, we actually had a connection, because they did a show here called Fools, 
and he did um, caricatures of oh, all right. the oh people gosh, in the that? show. Yeah. So we have a t-shirt with all our little yeah, caricatures from schools. Yeah. I also did a portrait of her. Yes, you did Laura. for Laura. For Laura. That's right. Uh, I have that in that my was closet here. somewhere. They call her oh. Laura. Oh, yeah, yeah. I was Laura and Laura. Right. Well, all right. I'm going to ask this of actually everybody, or sort of, sort of you as well. But Ron, acting? Or no, directing? no, thank you. I pass. You pass. <laughs> no, not strictly directing. Uh, no, you know what? Uh, as Lynn and I were talking about uh, before we started, um, I loved uh, being on stage. Uh, it was a great joy to me. Uh, but I discovered when I started directing that uh, I really enjoyed production. I like being on the other side. Uh, yeah, there's just Pulling something. Strings. I, I, you know what? I don't have to memorize lines anymore, which I love. Um, I'm allowed to eat whatever I want now. It's amazing. Um, but there is, uh, there is also something about. Uh, for me, it's always just been about being a storyteller. So, um, and I love to tell stories. And it, the best way for me to do it is to be on the production side. Then so be it. So. Well, and Ron I, and I have been on stage together mm -hmm. in 1999, March 12th, actually, 1999. And now you're going to be like, wow, right. a day that will live. <laughs> <laughs> who, who says my memory's going? But, uh, and, and Lynn Innes, with yep. Lynn Innes, at, at Moon Over Buffalo. That's right. That's right. Uh, at RCC, uh, oh. Performance Riverside. Okay. And One of my, my second show I ever did. So. Yeah. And it, yeah, it just it was a good show. A good, a good show. And what were you going to ask me? Acting or directing? What's your... Oh, I really like directing for the same reason. You don't have to memorize lines. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I like I like that. But I also, um, I I really do like acting. I think more. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna ask you anyway. I mean, I, I mean, honestly, mock trial is just like being a director. It is. But it is. acting or directing? What do you? Um, you know, acting is for me. It's it's a little selfish, but it's so cathartic. Okay. Um, I can see that. and I enjoy the emotional experience and it really I would get up and act if there was no audience <laughs> I, I enjoy the I enjoy every inch of the process except yeah. for the memorizing the lines oh, yes. I oh, love yeah. I love the rehearsal I love picking the character apart um, I just love every piece of it it just uh, allows me to embody um, different aspects of me of, or people that are completely different from me. When I did the mercy seat in uh, Chino, I hope I'm nothing like that person, but I loved embodying that person because yeah. it allowed me to understand why somebody would be that way and do that sort of thing. Yeah, I was gonna that's say, the thing about actors that makes you understand people mm -hmm. that you wouldn't necessarily mm -hmm. that's true. think yes. you would see eye to eye with. So. Well, I was just, just to jump on that, like one of the nicest things about doing this show is the, uh, especially, specifically with like the three of us, not against anybody else, but uh, the three of us have gotten to spend a lot of time together, like doing the table work. Uh, we've gotten to have conversations uh, about uh, everything from death to parenting to uh, 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 really like uh, relationships to uh, frustration. I mean, we, we had a very in-depth uh, conversation about the end of the show last night, which I will not spoil. Um, but, uh, but like in that moment, uh, it was, very interesting to me how like raw it got and how everybody was uh, bringing something to the conversation and through that we were able to craft what I think is going to be a fantastic ending you know for this play I, I am so looking forward to this I yeah. mean you've got Ron Miltz Mel Chaffick Sandra Ford what what more could you possibly want from our opening show of our hundredth season Patrick Stewart. Just, <laughs> Patrick yeah, well, you would have Patrick Stewart. I've Not to replace Patrick Mel, Stewart. just to come in and say hello. I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing this. I'm, I'm, looking forward yeah. to see, I'm looking forward to seeing this. Well, I'm, I'm very excited about it. We're going we're gonna to leave with something fun, though. Um, so okay. since it's such an iconic role, Ethel Thayer, mm -hmm. and Catherine Hepburn is such an iconic person doing it, anytime you ever hear somebody imitate Catherine Hepburn, she's oh, doing a line from... What is it? The loons, Norman? Is that actually a line in the show? Oh. She says the loons oh. a lot. The does she say yeah. the loons, loons Norman? Lot. She yeah. does a lot of loons. Okay, so as, as we leave, like <laughs> so no, as we leave I want to see your best Catherine Hepburn imitation. Oh, and we're going to start with, with Ron, because we're going to put you on. Oh, oh gosh. I, I, and you're on. I, I, uh, uh, the loons, Norman, the loons! <laughs> Mel. Oh, the loons, Norman, the loons. I didn't see it, so I'm just going to give it a shot. Give it a shot. The loons, Norman, the loons. <laughs> That's wonderful. <laughs> well, thank you very much for joining us. I know you've got a lot of rehearsing to do, so I'm not going to keep you any longer. Thank you very much also out there for joining us. 
uh, be sure and, and uh, check out our box office website for uh, tickets. If you don't, if you're not season ticket subscribers, you mean you know, but this is a perfect time for you to do it. Jump on the bandwagon, get your season tickets now, right before the first show starts. Get it for the whole year because uh, you're going to want to see every single show of our hundred season. And our first show is On Golden Pond, directed by Ron Mills, starring Mel Chadwick, Sandra Ford. I'm Philip Gabriel. Thank you so much for joining us with Cast Conversations inside the arena and a shout out to our own Lynn Innes who puts all of this together and makes it possible for you to see on social media. Thank you very much. Yeah, and we will see you inside the arena. The loons. 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 The loons.